And good morning, everyone. We are in the calm before the storm, or I should say between the storms. We've been just getting pounded the last couple of weeks, which is great. We needed the moisture. We've been taking full advantage of it on the snowmobiles, full bottomless powder stuck fest, but we're gonna try to take advantage of this nice weather before the storm blows in tonight. Go get some flying in. And also, the insurance for the truck and trailer that my brother was driving out to High Sierra that exploded and burnt to the ground, finally finished processing the whole thing. They've been trying to find a company to go out and recover the, the burnt truck and trailer, and they've had zero luck doing it. So the plan is Ryan, his guy Aaron, as well as I, are gonna fly out there, kind of check the conditions out of Dead Cow and see uh, how feasible it is to try to get heavy equipment out to kind of cut up the truck, get it into some sort of dump truck or trailer and get it out of there. So that is the plan. The traffic, Freedom Fox flight of two, taking runway eight will be a left crosswind turnout northbound. Instead. Ready, let's go five fingers. Ready. You up? I'm up. I'm gonna drop down and play in a second here. Alrighty. Eagle sitting on that little uh, rock to my left. You want to land Rocky Meadow before Dead Cow? Sure. Okay. I'm uh, base, almost final. One thing you guys will never hear through the GoPro is this prop makes a really cool whistle at the right, like when there's, I think, no thrust coming off of it and no drag, like when it's at the perfect speed. It just goes super cool sounding. But I can never capture decent audio because the wind noise. So you either get cockpit audio or wind noise. So uh, I normally just put cockpit audio in the videos. And if you want to just turn and burn in front of me, feel free. Will do. Crazy looking with all the ice crystals on everything, huh? What are all these coils? Oh, the seats, you're probably right. And then all the threads in the tire, huh? There was some one wheels in here. I don't see anything that resembles anything like a one wheel. Oh, here we go. Yep, this is the hub motor. Oh yeah, battery cells. Two one wheels right there. Two one wheels. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, right on top of each other. This one right here still has all the stuff on it. That one must have been the one that leaked. You know what I mean? Because if that leaked out everything and then it popped off, it wouldn't explode. But those guys, yeah, that one's. Oh yeah, look at that. That is a propane tank.
Yeah, that is a mess. So the road into here, at least the main access that we had planned to use, the short way into here is no good. The first part, part of it looked really great, but then there's a section that gets really silty from the lake bed that's below the elevation of the lake bed. And all the ruts from uh, tires going through there before are now just standing water. And uh, I mean, I guess if we got a hard enough freeze, it could get solid, but I, I wouldn't trust it, so. I mean, I think this is fine right now. I don't know, there were spots I was stepping on over there that yeah. were kind of squishy. No, in like 10 minutes, it's gonna be, yeah. I think it's not long, it's gonna be. Calling Heavy D with his new Apache. I was gonna say, we need we need Dave Sparks <laughs> get out here with his Blackhawk. Definitely a in dump though. I guess we gotta figure out how small we could make it and how small we can make the pieces. It's like one of those times we're gonna have to wait till it's really cold, get out here really early. Stay the night. Stay the night. <laughs> well, that's what we could do. We could drive out. Leave the stuff. Leave the stuff, shuttle everybody back and come back the next morning and leave. I think even if you have a decent road, if you have something to make a decent road, it's still just gonna, you're gonna sink the second it melts. Gosh, I really wish insurance didn't drag their feet so long so we could have beaten all the wet weather. Then this would have been a no problem. I guess that's what we could do. What if, if Forks would pick the truck up, we cut the bed off, take all the hand stuff loaded in there and just run the loader with the forks out. Carrying the truck? Carrying the truck with all the small stuff you can on it. Dump yeah, that in the bin. The yeah, fill the cab up with it and come back and do the same thing with the frame on the trailer and just get a bunch of straps and then not even bring a truck out here. Just run it with a loader? Run it with a loader out there. Yeah, and how long is it? Maybe, is it two miles to the road over there, you think? More than that. Three miles? Yeah. So, I mean, it'd be probably a two hour round trip, you think, if you were <laughs> loaded? All right. So, now we're going to go see if there is access to the lake bed right now via another route. Kind of have an idea of what we could do worst case scenario. If we can't get a truck out here with an end dump, um, then it'd be kind of a process we're thinking of using, or they are, a couple loaders, bringing pallet forks as well as buckets out to run every bit of it back and forth but it's probably a safer bet than uh, bringing a truck out if we can't find a good route of access so. now oh, right at the entrance it looks pretty gnarly <laughs> Yeah, right when you get to the fly it's the wood has fought the whole thing. Yeah, no joke. Oh, well, there's Toby's little runway he plowed in on the right. Oh, nice. And look at how deep entrenched the cow prints are. Yeah, none of that looks remotely promising. I wouldn't want to take anything that almost that wasn't tracked out of out there. Totally agree. Oh. It's just going on a, a wet lake bed is always just a no-go. The, the tricky part of all this is that, uh, you know, wet lake bed is no-go. I mean, it's like the ultimate way to get vehicles stuck and not just like a little stuck, like permanently there. But the problem we're running up against is if we leave the truck all winter through all the freeze-thaw cycles as well as all the precipitation, all of the weight of that thing is going to start seeping down into the lake bed. Also, we're worried about, you know, pollution from whatever's coming out of it. That it'd be better to get it out now because uh, come spring, that thing's going to be embedded into the ground and we're going to make an even bigger mess digging it out. But um, it's just the balance at this point, figuring out if it's worth the risk of bringing out gear, trying to catch it all when it's frozen versus, uh, you know, waiting. You good to mosey our way back? Yep. Perfect. Well, I don't think that's going to be a very simple recovery. No. You know what is easy though? Squarespace. <laughs> <laughs> he knew. Nothing. 
Nothing. Like that is ever as easy as building a website with Squarespace. And thank you, Squarespace, for sponsoring uh, yet another one of my videos. For those that don't know, Squarespace is the ultimate way to build a website and run your business. You start with one of their award-winning templates crafted into your own beautiful, professional-looking website that works on both desktop and mobile. And they have features for every industry. So if you were thinking about starting a recovery company, <laughs> you can make a website for it pretty easily using Squarespace. So if you guys haven't yet, make sure you head over to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to purchase make sure you use code Trent Palmer at checkout that'll get you 10% off and it does help me when you do that so I appreciate you guys for hanging in there watching the video supporting and like always you guys know the drill like this video if you do subscribe if you haven't come be my wingman we'll see you on the next one peace